In this video on nerve injuries of the upper limb, we will discuss about the injuries happening to the musculocutaneous nerve and the median nerve. First, the musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve is a branch from the lateral cord, which you can see here. This is the lateral cord, and this branch here is the musculocutaneous nerve supplying coracobrachialis, biceps and the brachialis muscle. Musculocutaneous nerve is usually present deep in the axilla, so there are less chances of injury to the musculocutaneous nerve. Mode of injury can be trauma which is deep to the coracoid process. The muscles supplied by musculocutaneous nerve are the biceps, brachialis and coracobrachialis. So they will lose their supply. Biceps and brachialis are the flexors at the elbow joint. So the forearm flexion will become weaker but it will not be lost because forearm can still be flexed by brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus which are supplied by radial nerve and the part of the brachialis which is again supplied by the radial nerve. The sensory loss will be seen on to the lateral side of the forearm because the musculocutaneous nerve after supplying biceps and the brachialis it continues to as the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm and it supplies all this area. So this lateral border and the adjoining area there will be a sensory loss. So this is all about the musculocutaneous nerve. Next the median nerve. Median nerve is formed by both the lateral cord and medial cord. So here you can see there is a contribution coming from the uh, lateral cord as well as from the medial cord and this is the median nerve running along with the brachial artery in the front of the arm. So here it is present in, uh, anterior to the humerus. Then it is seen in the cubital fossa. In the forearm it passes between the two heads of pronator teres and then deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis. In the lower part of the forearm it is running between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. Just above the wrist it gives palmar cutaneous branch which can be seen in this upper figure palmar cutaneous branch which is passing superficial to the flexor retinaculum. Remaining part of the median nerve is passing deep to the flexor retinaculum so you can see it here deep to the ret uh, flexor retinaculum and here also you can see the median nerve because the flexor retinaculum is cut. Then the recurrent branch supplies the thinner muscles and medial and lateral branches they supply the remaining digits and the lateral branch also supplies the lateral to lumbricals. Median nerve is formed but uh, it's, it's getting fibers from all the roots of the brachial plexus C5, 6, 7, 8 and T1. In the axilla there are no branches. In the arm also no branches except just above the elbow it gives branch to the pronator teres. In the elbow itself it also supplies flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus and flexor digitorum superficialis. Median nerve gives anterior introsious branch, anterior introsious branch which runs just in front of the introsious membrane and supplies flexor pollicis longus to lateral tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus and the pronator quadratus. Just above the wrist it gives palmar cutaneous branch. Uh, in the hand it gives recurrent branch supplying the three thinner muscles and the lateral branch supplying the two lumbrical muscles and the lateral and the 
medial branches supplying the skin of the fingers. So, that is the introduction of the median nerve. Now, if the median nerve is injured at the elbow, so what is going to happen? All the muscles which are supplied by the median nerve will lose their supply. This type of injury occurs mostly in cases of supracondylar fracture. This is a fracture just above the condyles of the humerus. So, here in the x-ray you can see the humerus lower end just above the condyle that is why it is called a supracondylar is fractured and the fractured fragment is moving anteriorly and as, a, uh, as I told that median nerve is present in front of the humerus. So, there are chances that this fractured fragment can damage the median nerve. Now, muscles which will be um, losing their nerve supply are listed here. So, pronator teres and pronator quadratus if they are not acting pronation will be lost. Flexor carpi radialis, flexor digitorum superficialis, palmaris longus and the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus, the lateral two tendons, they will lose their supply as well as the lateral two lumbricals, the lumbricals for the uh, index finger and the middle finger, they will be paralyzed. Now, uh, the functional loss will be flexor digitorum superficialis supplies the proximal interphalangeal uh, joint. So, flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint this will be lost. Flexor digitorum profundus the lateral half supplies the index and the middle finger at the distal interphalangeal joint. So, the flexion at the distal interphalangeal joint will be lost, but the ring finger and little finger distal interphalangeal joint and the uh, flexor digitorum profundus tendon is acting. So, still there will be flexion happening at the distal interphalangeal joint. So, if you ask the person having median nerve injury to make a fist what will happen? In resting stage hand will be like this if you ask him to make a fist. The index finger and middle finger both the joints have uh, lost the capacity to flex. So, they will not flex while these two fingers ring finger and index finger flexor digitorum profundus will uh, still cause some kind of flexion. So, this kind of position will be there this is called as hand of benediction. This is uh, the pos posture priest will take while uh, giving blessings in church. So, this is the hand of benediction which appears when you ask the person to flex the fingers. Then the hand will be in adducted position because flexor carpi ulnaris will pull the hand medially and flexor carpi radialis is paralyzed. So, it is not able to oppose the flexor carpi ulnaris. Median nerve is also supplying the muscles of thumb. So, the flexor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis and opponens pollicis, they all will lose their supply. Flexors are paralyzed, so extends the thumb will be in position of extension and abductor pollicis brevis is also paralyzed, so thumb will be adducted. Thumb usually is like this a bit anterior in the patient of uh, median nerve injury the thumb will be lying beside the hand and it will be laterally rotated and adducted. This kind of appearance is shown in these two figure here also you can see. So, this hand is called as ape thumb deformity. So, hand is like that of the ape, ape thumb def deformity. Also notice that the thinner eminence becomes flattened. So, this eminence is lost. Then the sensory loss will also be there. Sensory loss will be seen in the hand 
the palmar cutaneous branch which is supplying the palmar surface of the hand that area will lose sensation then the three and half fingers on the lateral side all this green area that also will lose sensation and the dorsal aspect again on the three and the half finger this will lose sensation so to test in clinics median nerve this area this index finger uh, clinicians are sure that this is supplied by the median nerve so they just check the sensations in the index finger then there will be vasomotor changes also the skin which is supplied by the uh, median nerve this will become reddened because the sympathetics which are traveling along with the median nerve they will be injured also there will be tropic changes like on the skin skin will become dry scaly nails will also uh, lose their uh, vascularity so those nail changes will also be seen those are all called as the tropic changes then one way to test for the median nerve is the patient will not be able to make a ok sign this is the ok sign which requires action of the flexors of the thumb as well as flexor uh, digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis supplying the index finger now both of these are not working so if you ask the person to make a ok sign he will make like this this kind of appearance would be there while making the ok sign normal ok sign is like this for median nerve injury patient the ok sign will be like this because the median nerve passes through the pronator teres there are chances that it can get entrapped between the two heads of pronator teres that is called as pronator teres syndrome now next we will see what will happen if the median nerve is injured at the wrist so if it is injured at the wrist most of the long flexors which are there in the forearm they are already supplied so they will be normal and effect will be seen mostly in the hand this kind of injury is seen if there is trauma or cut in the hand in the region of the median nerve where it is passing between the tendons of uh, in the in the wrist or if there is dislocation of the lunate bone median nerve is related just anterior to the lunate bone so in this case the thinner eminence will become flat the thinner muscles will lose their supply and there will be ape like thumb so ape like thumb will be there then index finger and middle finger because the lumbrical is not having its nerve supply so when you ask the person to make the fist he will be able to make the fist because the flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis they are acting normally but lumbrical is not able to assist them for making the fist so there will be slight lag while making the fist in the figure here you can see that this area the thinner eminence has become flattened and the thumb is lying in the same plane as that of the fingers it is laterally rotated as well so these things will be there if injury is at the wrist sensory loss is similar to what we have already discussed except that if the injury is at the lower level of the wrist then what is going to happen the palmar cutaneous branch which has already uh, arisen from the median nerve that will not be affected so the skin of the palmar region this portion the nerve supply will remain normal one important syndrome associated with median nerve is the carpal tunnel syndrome this happens if the median nerve is compressed in the carpal tunnel so 
here you can see the median nerve is passing through the carpal tunnel and in this lower figure also you can see that the median nerve is passing along with the nine other tendons in carpal tunnel so here is the median nerve because it is present in a small area there are chances that it can get compressed this can happen if there is thickening of the synovial sheaths of the tendon or arthritis of the carpals so in this case patient will be complaining about burning and pins and needle kind of sensation in the area supplied in the skin supplied by the median nerve a skin of the thinner eminence will be spared so as we have discussed that the palmar cutaneous branch passes above the flexor retinaculum so that will not be affected presence of carpal tunnel syndrome can be confirmed by the two tests tunnel sign and the fanel sign tunnel sign is uh, if you are pressing over the nerve there will be some uh, sensory changes over the supply of that nerve so if you press over the median nerve patient will complain more of burning and pins and needle kind of sensation in the area supplied by the median nerve so that's called as tenel's sign fanel sign is also using the same uh, principle but it asks the patient to do this kind of movement this increases the pressure in the carpal tunnel so it further presses the median nerve and same thing will happen in the area which is supplied by the median nerve there will be increased burning or pins and needle kind of sensation so that confirms the carpal tunnel syndrome so that is all for this video in next video we will discuss about the ulnar nerve